in answer to your question, Donald, I'm here, my friend. Never fear. The host is here. Uh, but the host is no good without his lovely entourage of people that actually do this orchid. And I just ask the questions. That's the easy part of today. Uh, so there we go. Lates are noted with hope. Listen, right? There's no such thing as HR. I'm not even funny. You promoted me yesterday, so do one. Um, anyway, that's not how we introduce things. Hi, everybody. How are we doing? This is Off United WFC. Uh, and we currently have uh, the rather wonderful Jess. She's just there. Uh, and the absolutely excellent Sarah. She's down there. We're down one at the moment. Hence why we haven't started straight on time, Mr. Connor. But you don't need to worry about that. Uh, we do have a replacement drafted in. And they are on their way. Uh, just having a little walk, so we'll see if they turn up. You never know, the original might turn up as well. They've gone radio silent. I'm hoping they're okay, so we shall see what's going on. Um, but other than that, let's just have a quick double check that everybody on here is okay. Jess, how's things? Yep, all good, thank you. Sorry, I had a little moment there trying to unmute myself, but we got there in the end. And uh, we understand you've got yourself a new puppy. I Can you tell us a bit about the type of music that your puppy might be listening to right now? Right now, he is listening to, let me have a look. Uh, right now he is listening to Bring Me the Horizon. And there I hope go. that Horizon is brought. That would be great. Uh, Sarah, how's things down there? Yeah, all good. My, my very old puppy's gone out for a walk, so <laughs> he won't With be disturbing friends, things. Just some music as well? Uh, yeah, he quite likes jazz, actually. Ooh, See, no, which which like I that. don't, so. <laughs> oh, I've not tried. Well, I'll get some jazz on later. <laughs> Could be cool. Could be cool. Uh, oh, hang on, what's this? See, now, unfortunately, Jess, Connor likes them, so it's gone down all of a sudden. Cool points, gone. Yeah. Uh, but there we go. So there we go. Dogs with good taste in music. There you are. So everybody's loving that. Okay, Excellent. I'm glad, I'm glad to be approved. It's my playlist, so it's just going to run through all the <coughs> of things. Cracking. We love that. So those of you that have been observant, and you should have been observant, really, because the thumbnails are absolutely massive, considering what they actually are. We'll know exactly what we're going to be talking about today. We've got a few things we're going to talk about. We're going to talk a, a lot about Old Trafford and LSB and what we're doing. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the FA Cup match that we just had at the weekend and how we see the next couple of games going. I say the next couple of games, almost as if we're guaranteed to defeat Brighton, uh, but we shall see. Uh, we're probably going to have a little chat about Lisa Niles and the news coming out that it could be eight weeks uh, before we see her again. Um, and also, I might have mentioned Rachel Williams' little press conference that they did. That I mean, very interesting. Imagine that, some United ch chance, get them how long we could do. That uh, might be a bit doggy. Mm, that'd be an interesting one. Uh, and this one, Donald, I've got to be honest, I'm going to have to think about that. Any music for the Ducks? Uh, I don't know, you can listen to Quack Sabbath. That'd be quite good. A little bit of that. That's a, mate, off the top of my head, I was thinking for a while, didn't get there, but there we are. We got one. And Kaz, lovely to see you. Uh, looking forward to seeing you next week. Old Trafford. We deliberately used uh, United Charm, Take Me Home, United Road, uh, because it feels muted to me, what I'm hearing at the moment, with regards to Old Trafford. You think about... We had West Ham, we played those when it was behind closed doors. The Everton game was obviously massive, first game at Old Trafford for the women with paying customers inside it. And then we had the Villa game, which was a bit big because it was this year and we enjoyed that and we won 5 0 and that was all good. Is it me or do you feel like this game at Old Trafford is just sort of passing us by a bit, really? And it's just, it feels like it's an ordinary game that's happening at LSV. It doesn't feel like there's been as much build up for me. As there is normally would, would you go along with that Jess? Yeah I mean to be honest I'd only like half kind of realised that it was even going to be played there um, I'm wondering if it's because they're pushing so hard for the game this weekend um, and maybe like the sort of women's media team can only focus on one game at a time um, so they're kind of putting all their advertising because they're still advertising for Saturday um, so I'm just wondering whether that's kind of their main focus. And maybe after that, they might kind of go, oh, by the way, there's another game. It's quite important. It's a semi-final if you're interested. Um, potentially. Uh, I don't know whether they think that we have kind of like, as fans, a limited kind of brain capacity maybe, and we can only 
consider one game at Old Trafford at a time, maybe. Maybe. I mean, Sarah, Connor's put on here, also not helped by the fact the club keep advertising as a family day out. Um, it's a weird one, isn't it? Because the women's game very much, that was like the, the USP almost, wasn't it? For, um, for for the women's game, is that it was a family day out. It's a place where you could take the kids. Um, you think about chance, for example, they are deliberately changed. So um, you look at... Uh, UNIT, the United team for me with a knickknack, paddywhack, give the dog a bone, why don't City go on home? Yeah. And it's changed. Now, there'll be men's fair team fans everywhere seeing that with the expletive that's supposed to be in there. But it is a change and it has, I think, benefited it really because it's not a huge gain really by throwing in those sorts of words. You know, it does uh, leave a lot to be desired sometimes. But I get it also. I'm not saying that you don't censoring stuff just saying but it, it is a bit of a family day out how do you feel about it now though still being portrayed as a family day out because i'm telling you now united away to arsenal that was not a family day out uh, because yeah. children would have been crushed uh if they'd have been in front of shame i'm telling you that now i don't know how i survived um yeah i mean on the one hand i do think it's good you know that it's inclusive and it's a nice atmosphere for kids to be part of because obviously some of the men's games if i had a young child i wouldn't be entirely comfortable you know with the atmosphere surrounding that um but yeah i think it's kind of reached the point now where i think it there needs to be more of a balance between like yeah by all means bring your kids it is a great thing to you know to bring them to but I just, I mean, I wasn't at the Villa game. I'll be at this one. But even just the whole thing with the band and everything, people complaining about that and just, um, I mean, I don't think there's necessarily a huge difference because it's Old Trafford. But even just from my experience at LSV, just watching, I was watching kids going in and out, you know, during the game, parents getting them hot chocolate and stuff and just, not actually watching what was happening on the pitch. And I just think that's quite detrimental to the atmosphere. So, yeah. Yeah, and again, kind of making some great points here. I'm not saying it completely needs to change. Personally, don't feel the same hype as seeing a sellout LSV with a standing terrace. And I suppose there's people that have been and just always seen that terrace end as being where we put the flags actually having that opportunity now to look there and go actually look at all four sides people on all four sides because that was certainly one of the big things that was mentioned that you know the cameras would be facing and it was always facing an empty stadium effectively because all the players were in the other stand that's all the players all the fans the players were in the stand no wonder it was a boring game um all the fans were in the stand where the where the the camera was um anyway we have got our fourth person they have turned up they were mid walk i do believe and they have ran like usain bolt after yet another world record uh, to make it here uh, to help us out so much appreciated it's a bit of a legend at these parts so here he comes here he is mr johnny k how you doing sir i'm very well thank you for the grand entry <laughs> well you deserve it mate you know see people do good things they get nice things said um uh, well, wouldn't say about him <laughs> obviously we're on the old traffic chat at the moment john we've just been talking about how it feels a bit flat it doesn't feel like it's being built up as much as the other old trafford games have been um what, what's your take on it have you been seeing much on your social media does it feel like it's a big yeah. occasion or is it just sort of feeling a bit like we we'll just put you there because the men aren't playing there so it was something we could do quite easily it does feel a, a bit like that. Um, obviously, I remember being on this show, you know, prior to the Villa game in December, and uh, I, I said at that time that yeah, there was a promotion in uh, social media. I've noticed on things like Twitter and Facebook, there's been a little bit more promotion over the last few days, and that um, I think it, yeah, I think it has a lot to do with it. It's obviously an international break. Uh, for me, the club could have done more um, to promote this game because it's like I know where uh, the men's team have been playing an awful lot since you know Christmas and the World 
than that, and but everyone's seems to be the opinion. Oh well, it's uh, the men are off for two weeks. We're getting a break from football and everything. It's kind of like, well, no, actually, the women are playing out. Rather than not many people know about that. And um, for me, um, it's all good doing it on social media. But I said at the time for the Villa game, not everyone's on social media, are they? You know, where most of the social media stuff is on Twitter, or most population is on Twitter, and obviously we are, but. Uh, most of the population isn't. Um, so for me, yeah, it has been a bit disappointing. The, the club haven't really promoted it, and that um, there's not been really. Uh, I mean, yeah, they announced it games all week, our game. Uh, you know, I've been sold traffic a, you know, a few times for the men this season, and they, they have promoted it a little bit at some of the home games, but it's just not. Uh, it's just not. Um, sufficient really and um, I mean it, it'd be nice to if he could get an increase in the centers went up from what was 21,000 against Everton it was obviously 30,000 December um, but for me it, it, I mean if you could maybe break it if you could maybe get you know maybe 35,000 and that would be ideal and for me it's kind of like when we played the leads it was uh, at Christmas or close to Christmas when the weather's cold and now now we're in the spring. You would have thought with the weather, you know, getting a bit better now, you could have done a bit, bit more most in that. Um, I, I also spoke with some people who are going who um, haven't been to women's game before, which is good. But, um, but for me, it, it's almost as if it's all on social media now. That's where you get most of your appeal now. And yeah, you get a lot of appeal, but there's not really been that much appeal. No, that much promotion. I don't know whether they've been in contact with local schools, for example. Maybe they could have done that off a free ticket to schools and that kind of thing. And for me, that uh, for me, the club has to be a bit better going forwards. And uh, also, it'd be nice maybe next season to get you know one of the big teams playing Old Trafford. Maybe if we do get in the top three, maybe a Champions League game or two. At Old Trafford would be ideal. Light under the lights, absolutely. Um, Jess, have you been to a, a Man United women's game at Old Trafford? Yes, I went and to one couple Was it Villa? Good Villa, morning. okay. And have you, you've been to one at LSV as well, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, I've been to a few at LSV and I'm going this weekend. Excellent. So, Sarah, you, I think, have done LSV but not a women's game at Old Trafford yet? No, Saturday will be my first, yeah. <laughs> right. And John, we know you've done both, haven't you? Uh, I've only been to one old travel. Unfortunately, I'm missing Saturday because I've got something on in the evening. But you've been, uh, you've been to LSV as well. I've I've been, been, I've been, yeah, yeah. And the reason why I ask this question is because oh, people tweeting. Let me give it on that one there. It's this. We talked about the hype. I find this, and I'd like Sarah to tell us a bit more about why it is that she says this. But I don't look forward to, because to me, that should be like the absolute nirvana shouldn't it because as a player that's where you want to play is old trafford surely nobody ever grew up going i really want to play lsv i mean it's lovely but it's it's not like bucket list sort of stadium is it um but i understand what she's saying i think people do now look forward to lsv because it's becoming like a little fortress it's becoming a little place where you know, people come along there is a wall of noise there are people getting involved from all corners and because it's filling up it's a really interesting situation there. Um, so I suppose, I mean, you haven't been yet. Are you looking forward to going to Old Trafford more because it's your first opportunity to see the women there and you think that's going to be a cool thing for you, whereas these two have perhaps seen it, uh, been there, done that. You know, how's your feeling on it compared to a normal game at LSV? Um, yeah, I mean, for me personally, I am looking forward to it because I just, I mean, I don't get, to go to Old Trafford that often because obviously it involves flights and stuff but um, yeah so it does have that sort of appeal for me um, I mean I think back to say when I was about 10 years old and if the women's game had been as big as it now is and someone had said to me you can go to Old Trafford and watch United's women's team I think that would have been just like I would have been in awe of that. So I still kind of have that feeling now. 
but at the same time i can understand uh why maybe it, there's not as much hype involved or people would prefer to go to lsv because um when i was there for the everton game obviously that was my first time there but i really apart from the scoreline obviously i really enjoyed the atmosphere um so i can totally understand that but i think i i can't deny you know being excited to see them at old trafford and just to see what that experience is like and obviously you can understand that for the players it's a really big deal like people like ella toon who you know grown up supporting the club and even though they've played there a few times already i just get the impression that it's it's still you know a sort of pinch yourself moment when they go out onto that pitch absolutely and, and jess and john we're going to ask you as well but some of these guys are putting in so sarah's responded she's put the atmosphere totally different old trafford there are bands playing and sweet caroline being sung it's amazing how that song has been vilified now more and more it's like it's such an anti uh, climax. I can remember it being belted out during the Euros. Um, you know, Donald has put also at LSV people can meet all their friends and chat during the game, which can't always happen at Old Trafford, which is true depends where you sit in. Um, does make it a little bit less accessible. Sarah then continues, it feels more that my team is playing when they're at LSV, if that makes sense. It does in my little mind. It's fine. Um, and I'm probably going to say this wrong. I don't know. Sarah might be able to help us out a bit more. I feel like I want to say Ryan. But it uh, it's Rian. Re- Rian, <laughs> see? Because I'm thinking of what the, the anglicised version would yeah. be. So I think it's one of the two. I was close. Uh, so Rian, there we go. Well done, Rian. Lovely to see you here. Uh, but LSV won't have a concert atmosphere. It's absolutely right. It doesn't. Um, short answers for you two, really. Where would you rather go and watch now? If you were going to watch this game at the weekend, if you had the pass and you could go, would you rather it was at Old Trafford or would you rather it was at LSV? Jess? Um... Well, to be honest, I I think one of the reasons why Old Trafford doesn't hold that much appeal is I find is the teams we're playing. Like I went to go watch United and City at the Etihad, and I was like so hyped for it. I mean, I was surrounded by City fans, but it was because it was a Manchester derby. It was a big game. And it was really cool being like it being in the stadium. I'm not, you know, West Ham this weekend. I think we're going to hopefully batter them. I'm more excited about the fact that I've actually paid extra and I'm going hospitality because I would never be able to afford that to watch the men play. Um, so for me, it's more the teams that are being selected for the Old Trafford games. And I know that's just because that's when Old Trafford's empty. But I do think it would be more exciting and more appealing if we had some actual kind of big games there, you know, against the top three. And like we were saying before, if we do get Champions League next year, some Champions League games, I think that would hold much higher kind of appeal. Um, and hopefully that would kind of then... The atmosphere would reflect that and we'd have a bit more of a not serious atmosphere but less of this kind of like oh family day out let's all sit and you know sing sweet caroline and have a little laugh yeah as you can see here sarah's like no sing about england games all you like but not at the club games i always yeah. found it amazing that sweet caroline was like the song of choice at boxing like I was watching my nephew box and this pick grown men and women singing this song while throwing their pints in the air. Uh, and it's like, it's, it, I, I know the singer. It's like, is it Neil Sadaka or Neil Diamond? I always get those two mixed up, but whichever one Neil it is. Neil Diamond. Neil Diamond, I think. Yeah. My goodness. It's like, I don't think he ever expected that. So there you go. Um, unless it's top three, then leave it LSP. We are going to get to that. I haven't ignored all of your comments about that, but I had a structure going and I'm going to lead into that. So that will be where we're going next. Don't think I've ignored half of you lot talking. That's not what's happened. But John, I do want to ask you, where would it be? LSP or OT? Um, I agree that I'd rather be one of the top three um, playing them at Old Trafford. However, I, I've always been an advocate we should play at Old Trafford more than one in a season so for me if this is the only time you can play another game Old Trafford this season I'm glad we're having it at Old Trafford for me okay uh, definitely anti Connor doesn't like Sweet Caroline I think Connor eats burgers and forks and knives so you know, it's not the best of opinions there but Tony he's not a fan I don't, well, I don't know he's, it's quite ambiguous just telling us it's there 
Okay, fair enough. Uh, whereas sport, he's like, no, it's done to death now. Get something new out of there. Um, so, listen, we've spoken a lot about it. And we're going to have a, a, a quick game because I think I did this the last time we played at Old Trafford. I seem to remember John Camo doing quite well. Um, <laughs> on the men's channel, we, we've started calling John Camo Stato because he keeps on coming up with these statistics and things that he's remembered. So, girls, you are up against it today. Uh, <laughs> you just have some sort of photographic memory. Uh, so we shall see whether or not he gets this. But we have obviously played three games, provided my research and thoughts are correct, at yep. Old Trafford. We played West Ham United behind closed doors. We won 2 0. We played Everton, first game at Old Trafford with paying customers. We won 3 1, having gone behind 1 0. The only goal we've conceded at Old Trafford so far. Aston Villa, the game Jess was at, we won 5 0. We've got numerous goal scorers there. In the 5 0 game, there were five different goal scores. In the 3 1 game, there were two different goal scorers. In the 2 0 game, there were two different goal scorers. I'm gonna I'm gonna end with you. Jess, can you pick one person who scored a goal in those Ultra Old Trafford games? Russo. Russo is on the list. Well done. You can come back next week. Sarah. Williams. Absolutely did score. Well done. Johnny K. Press is another good one. That's the one you forgot last time, I think. So well done. Remember it first this time. Jess, back round to you. Uh, Galton. Galton's on the list. Congratulations. Well done. Sarah. Oh. Toon. Toon is not on the <sighs> list, I'm afraid. It was a great guess, but she's not there. John. <laughs> Uh, Zellum. Zellum, absolutely. Penalty in one game and then scored in the other. There are two goal scorers left. Can you think of one of them? I'll tell you, the first one is in the 2-0 game and the other one was in the 5-0 game. I think Honor scored she in did. the Villa game. That was at the Villa game. You did have that as a bonus. So, at the moment, Jess could win just on virtue of the fact that I made John go last here. But he could level up, Sarah, if you don't get who the goal scorer was against West Ham behind closed doors. Oh, oh God. My memory is failing me. <laughs> do you know it, John? I think I do, yeah. Thinks he does. Well, oh, it's tense. Who needs pointless? Or the chase? Oh, hang on. Oh. I could be wrong, but something is telling me Lauren James. <laughs> Smash him. Oh, Nailed God. it. So technically Jess wins because she did get more right. <laughs> but I feel like Sarah's the winner there because she managed to strike <laughs> the barrels of her memory and come up with the first goal scorer at Old Trafford. Yeah, that was good. I mean, I couldn't remember anything beyond the game that I went to and I could barely remember that. I was just sort of guessing. Well, there you go. Connor did get that because Honor rhymes with Connor, so he was never going to forget that. <laughs> um <laughs> So there we go. And absolutely, Sporty did come up with James as well eventually. So there we go. Well done, Connor. Um, so yeah, there we go. Uh, and Eddie's saying, Toon will be on Saturday. Listen, you've got the link, love. Jump on. Feel free. <laughs> come in. <laughs> Don't be shy. So that's all good anyway. So I want to now talk about those games because those games, we had West Ham, Everton, Villa, and now we're playing West Ham again. Is this part of the reason? It's been mentioned a lot in the in the chat already, um, but it's kind of started it here. You know, seems more promotion the last time, but less hype. They know this is something we're getting to. There you go. You see, but it's just not a big event anymore. It needs that big game there. It's becoming just the norm, effectively, to turn up every now and again. And Kaz has put it. We need a big game. We played at Old Trafford. Rivalry always brings people in, especially a top table fight. And actually. You know that will probably be a bit more helpful for people that might want to transfer from the men's game. They'll be more willing to give it a chance if it's United against Arsenal, United against City, United against Chelsea, because they're big names that they recognise. You know, United against West Ham, it's a bit middle of the road really in that respect. Um, and exactly what Chad says here: Would you rather go to Old Trafford to see West Ham or Chelsea? I know what my answer would be, and I'm amazed that you would say West Ham. Uh, by the way, I did forget to bring this up, John, but I think we're being sold off there about the free tickets to school. Uh, he thinks tickets should never uh, be given away. And well, I, I guess they do, they do um, it in, in defence. They do give free tickets to schools for the men's game because it, it does happen. 
So it just to back up my point. Listen, Stephen is does it as well. You know, it's it's one of those where if you haven't filled the space up, nobody's gonna be sat there to try and get some of the people from the future. So in fairness, Johnny Gay, I actually agree with you on that one. Schools, absolutely. Don't be giving them to the businessmen down the road necessarily, because they can afford to pay. But absolutely all women. Um, but definitely give it to the schools because they're the people from the future they're the fans of the future get them in while they're young um and hopefully they'll really enjoy watching it so where do we stand on this because like i say people are talking about you know needs to be a massive game at old trafford now for more of a set out what what are we going to do about this because if we don't get a decent game i mean the argument was that we don't want to put a big game on there and then lose because that might switch people off but is that the case? Do we now need to do that? Because, I mean, Arsenal can't have been happy that we went yet to the Emirates and beat them 3-2 because that's meant to be their special game. But what do you think? Is there, is there a potential risk and reward thing here? Uh, I mean, yeah, but at the end of the day, like, it's football. Um, you always run the risk of losing. And if you go and watch a game and don't think that it's possible at all for your team to lose, then you need to grow up. I mean, I've been and watched some shockers of men's games Old Trafford and I mean absolute shockers um, but for some unknown reason I continue to go back so yes I understand that maybe the minority might go mm-hmm. and watch a big game you know say we play Chelsea there and Chelsea beat us um, there might be like a minority put off by that but at the end of the day are they the people that we want to come back anyway because they don't sound like the kind of fans that are really fans um, because unfortunately football is cruel and you have to love your team no matter what, win, lose, draw, that's it. Absolutely you do. Um, now, I remember in this very conversation we were talking about that, that previous Old Trafford game and we spoke about this, this was the exact conversation, should we have you know, a bigger game at Old Trafford? Do we need to have bigger teams? And, and you were the one that said, Connor, about you know part of the reason might be because they don't want to lose and then people won't turn up and i'm not saying that that means you shouldn't be saying what you're saying now because i agree we shouldn't be scared but it was clearly an opinion does does it mean that now that we've watched united do well sarah and now we can see them pushing towards the top of the table but actually we just hold less fear we feel more capable of beating arsenal more capable of beating city who knows what's going to happen against chelsea so therefore we're now in a situation where we feel a lot more confident going into those games that we're not going to get steamrolled 6-0 and switch people off. Uh, yeah, I think that's definitely true. I mean, I think you can just feel the confidence in the team as well as the fans. Um, but yeah, I agree with everything that Jess said. Like, you know, losing is just part of the game and we wouldn't have those same expectations of the men's team. So why should we like have them for the women's team? It almost, it kind of feels like Molly Coddling or something in a way, you know, like, oh, it's kind of this thing of, oh, it's only the girls, you know, so we don't want to be seen to be losing. And I just don't think, I don't think it's fair to them either to, to, to have those sorts of expectations. I mean, these are professional footballers. They are going all out to win anyway. So, you know, and I actually think it would be, it would help the atmosphere too. You want people getting behind the team. And if there is something at stake, maybe you're, you know, one nil down or something. I mean, you could see in, with the Arsenal game, you know, how much that was changing. And you ju- could just, even just watching on TV, you could hear the atmosphere just lift. So I think you need those kinds of things. Absolutely. Rianne's made a cracking point here. Uh, Arsenal lost to us at the Emirates and the journos made a more compelling case for away ends. And that was absolutely the big thing that came out of the game with the Emirates. I mean, that away end was bouncing, uh, literally, on the chairs for 30 minutes after the final whistle. Uh, most of us seeing the mail at TCA, so it was wonderful. Uh, and I'm glad you put that, because I wasn't sure what word you wanted to put there. So, yes, arguably, uh, the journos made a more compelling case for away ends. So... That's a really important thing. And actually, John, that could be the, the big thing of putting a big game on in a game uh, sorry, in a stadium like Old Trafford because that gives the opportunity for the away end 
culture to be embedded more and more and more into the women's game, which it really needs to be now. We talked about a family day out, but equally, you'd want a family day out with your team rather than having to be dotted about, you know, having the Reading fans tutting at you because you dare to stand or, you know, any, anything like that. Um, other fans are available. That was just the first one that came to mind. Um, so what's your thoughts, John? Because there's that side of things. <clears throat> and there's also, uh, Stu Barker's just said, every game at Old Trafford. How do we feel about that? Do we not think that maybe, you know, true equality, we've just finished playing Equality FC, Mm. True equality is every game at Old Trafford because that is the home of Manchester United Football Club. I think, think? Uh, I think it's interesting. I'm not sure it'd be possible to play every game Old Trafford because obviously it it depends when the men play as well, doesn't it? So you know, you, if it's both games are on the same day, you can't really do both games at Old Trafford, can you? So for me, I, I would maybe look at. You know, when we get new owners, maybe building a second round next. So, I'll trap the women's and the academy. Now, much so like what City have done for me. But uh, for me, uh, uh, Ian's argument about way ends absolutely. And it, it should be pointed out all oh, this fear of losing. You, you can't ignore the fact that um, have we actually lost in a big stadium? You know, I said, I don't. I'm not sure we have because we we went we won away at Arsenal, but we also drew at City. You know, I was well. Spurs. We were at the big stadium for yeah, Spurs. And we, we, beat, and we beat Spurs as well. So for me, this uh, oh, we might and Leicester. Be... We've not lost at Leicester yet. That's always the normal yeah. ground. And the Reading one is quite a big ground. I don't think we lost there. Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of like, well, we've gone away to some big places this year and not lost. So uh, I think we might have lost. Yeah, she had a few years back, haven't we? But I think that's that was, saying, don't remember it. Yeah, so that was the only one. But for me, it's just, um, I mean, the, the girls are more used to playing in big grounds now, I feel. And, the, you know, like uh, a lot of them were introduced to that, you know, that the big crowds during the Euros weren't, they? you know, like um, England's opening game was six, seven thousand, I think. You know, so they, they are used to getting those kind of atmospheres, 30, 40 plus, and some of them, of course, playing the final way, it was 86,000. So for me, it's, um, and if anything, that Arsenal game, if you look back at it, there, it was just before the Men's World Cup, and there were some Arsenal fans who went there. Uh, it was the first time they experienced it. And rather than, obviously, they'd be disappointed they lost, they actually said, oh, actually, my, my, um, thoughts about the WSL have grown because of that game and how, you know, maybe I'll come back even if you're an Arsenal fan, you can say actually that was that might have been the best thing for the WSL as a whole, that you had you know, millions of people watching and people attending and thinking, my gosh, this is not bad, this, you know, kind of thing, so if, and me, yeah, you got to try and get you know, some of the bigger teams all traffic because we've, like I say, we've with we're undefeated at Tottenham, Arsenal, and Sister season. Why not get them to Old Trafford? Um, I personally think that um, if you can't, and I would have ideally wanted to have the City game, Old Trafford, you know, the last one before. Yeah. And, it, and that's the other thing you got to factor in that, you know, I think you have, if we were to beat Brad to reach the FA Cup final, it's the weekend before it, and it, it you know, when we play City. So you think if we, gone to Wembley, maybe if we were to win the FA Cup, imagine showing the FA Cup around the Old Trafford, you know, for the City game possibly, that's another thing uh, they call it, so I think there's a great North runners, not the great North from the Manchester yeah, run yeah, so for me it, it's, uh, sorry I missed that, but um, yeah, right, I think it's one of them that I think next season you really do have to start getting some of those bigger games, you know, why not play Chelsea, Arsenal and City all at Old Trafford, you know, build that prestige on us and I guarantee if if we were playing City this weekend, there wouldn't have been this kind of like, oh, it's only West Ham kind of thing, more people would be up for it and then, yeah, get proper way ends and I do think eventually you'll get to a point where you do have a bit more of a raucous atmosphere perhaps, so yeah, bring it on. Absolutely. Fair points. Uh, Ellie's gone for just one special game at Old Trafford, and I'm going to come back to Ellie's points on that, although she does go one or two uh, special games. So, you know, 
room for a change there. I, I just want to ask the commenters. I once did a show from the M5 services, I think it was at the time, or the M6 services. Um, and it went very wrong. It was a very bad connection. I kept getting kicked off. It was horrific. But a boat in Staffordshire, to me, is the most exotic slash weird slash different place that you've ever watched AF. So I want to know, um, you know, sensible and clean answers only, obviously. But where's the weirdest place you've been watching AFU? Because that, to me, is a question and a half. Greetings from a boat in Staffordshire. Where have you been? Anyone on the moon? Anything like that? That'd be quite cool to find out. Um, Ian confirmed we did lose at the Etihad in 1920, so sadly I can't just scrub that off because yeah. I'm reminded now. Sporty says, though, Jess, it's still too early to play every game at Old Trafford. Um, and, and Connor, back again with his little um, comment swap, says it's possible to have all the games at Old Trafford, but Farrah makes a good point on her podcast that the atmosphere is better in a full 8,000 stadium than 15 to 20,000 in a 75,000 capacity stadium, which I do tend to agree with. Where do you stand on having every game at Old Trafford? Because I, I kind of get what Sarah's saying there as well about how oh, it's just the girls. And when you start saying just have one special game at Old Trafford, it almost feels a bit like you're just trying to give them a treat rather than, you know, treating them as if they are an equal, important part of the club. Um, I get that logistically it might not always work, but where, where would you stand on putting every game on Old Trafford? Uh, I don't think at this point it's really feasible to put every game at Old Trafford. Um, again, that's a lot to do with logistics and things like that. And quite frankly, some of the games, you know, um, some of the, the teams lower down in the league, you wouldn't sell any tickets for it to kind of be worth it. And at the end of the day, I know we hate thinking about it like this, but it is a business. Um, and we want to see kind of growth for the game. But to do that, it's got to be sustainable, which means you don't want to just suddenly throw every game into Old Trafford and people kind of switch off almost. I think we need more than that are currently being played. Um, and I'm not a massive fan of... I think someone mentioned it in the comments already that they switched... Yeah, there we go, the comments are now. They switched the time from half... Was it half 12 or half 2? Mm -hmm. Half 2, they changed to half. 12, yeah. Which for me, it's actually a lot more convenient. Um, but you can't do that. You know, people, I, I, the amount of posts I saw on Facebook and Twitter saying that people suddenly couldn't go and all this, like that would not happen with the men's game. You pick a time and that has to be it. You can't just think, oh, it's just the women. It doesn't matter. We'll just reschedule it to fit in with our plans. No, you host an event and it needs to be at that time. People are traveling all over the country to see this. You know, people are getting flights to see this. Um, because it's at Old Trafford, we need to professionalise it, basically. Um, you know, it's really not professional to be messing around with the, with the times within, you know, a kind of a couple of months of it actually kicking off. Um, so I'd be wanting, like Ellie kind of mentioned, a couple of like the special games. I know this might that might be kind of diff difficult because United don't make the schedule that is obviously done by the FA, but we've got to do something to get some big games at Old Trafford. Like I mentioned before, I went to go, I went to the Etihad to see United and City, and that had, I think there were like 34, 35,000 people there, maybe. They're the games that are going to bring in the fans. Because um, even people that may not normally watch women's football, you know, they might know one or two City players, and that's then more interesting for them to kind of watch, or they just think, oh, it's a Manchester derby. I might never get the chance to see one of these, so I'll get tickets. Uh, so I do think that we need to start getting or trying to organise bigger games at Old Trafford. And I would like to see more more there kind of throughout the year. Um, a lot of the other clubs seem, the other clubs just seem to be able to get more in their kind of men's stadium throughout the throughout the season. I think United are kind of lagging a bit there. Fair points, fair points, one and all. Um, High Lane Production saying, I think it would make more sense to host more games at Old Trafford, but not all, do it the way Arsenal do. Significant games get held at Old Trafford where possible. Rihanna again making a great point. Um, about doing the bigger games like Barca, for example. They play all their Champions League games at Camp Nou. Uh, so only if people just insist. Uh, we have had some rather interesting places. Uh, Ellie has watched us at Toonies Local, which is nice. Ian has watched us on a plane over the Atlantic. So we've had boats and planes so far. Uh, Rian hadn't quite got on the plane. He was watching it at the airport. 
Uh, and he's also watched it at a game. So what we're hearing here is that Ellie just watches us wherever she is. Uh, seems to be there. So that's great news. We love that. Uh, so yeah, weirdest, oddest places that you might have watched. Throw them in there. Uh, Ian is saying that it's the TV that changed the kickoff, uh, just like in the yeah. men's game. I think it was actually, which it's again, probably. TV people or whoever's you know whoever's high up organising all that, they need to not do that. You know, this it's isn't nice. just, this isn't just a little kick about. This is you know a professional game. The elite league for the women, exactly that. Um, and yeah, you know, Sang's given it. He's already straight in. Small matter of the Champions League. Don't worry, we'll be seeing you next year, mate. We'll be seeing you next year. Um, uh, oh, look at that. Kind of getting really excited. Good win for you, Sang. I mean, now's a good time to point out as well, though. I'm hearing rumours um, that Millie Bright might have gone off during that game with a bit of a knee problem. Um, I've got something to add as well. Um, Corey Williams scored for Blackburn tonight. There you go, see, Stato's off again. Still seeing it on Twitter. Out of nowhere, throw that one in. Yeah. So there we go, good news. But yes, absolutely, I think it was a great win for you. Absolutely, 100%. But yeah, Millie Bright, that could be a very important injury if it's that serious. Um, who knows, that is not... Um, um, I'm saying to what, I'm thinking to what it could be, like whether it will like me or ligaments or is it something that uh, it's a uh, one is saying knows what it appears to be possibly yeah didn't look good so mm. that is a shame there um paul over there it's time for all red all equal to start meaning something uh, and i think i would have to agree with that um anything else that's interesting before we move on would suggest to switch from LS LSP to the AJ Bell Stadium to be <coughs> already shared by the Salford Red Devils. Actually, you did make a good point, Sporty, up here. It was an interesting idea that he had suggested. Um, I think it was you anyway. Yeah, double no, headers, was it? it. Yeah. Right, double headers. The women in men's at Old Trafford, both rugby really league World Cup finals were played on the same day there. Mm. I've heard this. I don't know. I think the hardest thing about this is managing the ins and the outs. Mm. Do you buy a ticket that gets you a game for both men's and the women's? You can't do that at Old Trafford because getting tickets at Old Trafford is like gold dust anyway. Um, so do you do separate tickets, separate events? Do you do it at the same time? How do you then manage the people that are going out, making sure the ones that go out actually go out and don't come back in? I'm sure it's doable, but I think you'd have to have a, a sizable difference in time. And then that leads to the question <coughs> of who from the game at the men's level is then going to stay for the women's game. Or do you start with the women's game? And then how many people in the women's game are staying for the men's? I don't know it. Yeah, if it could be... United, like So many people would be trying to buy tickets for the men's game. So I've actually just bought tickets the other day for rugby, the uh, men's and women's double header against France. But I feel like rugby probably isn't as popular, maybe. I don't know. I bought them for a friend, so I, don't, I have next to no interest in rugby. But that basically, the women kick-off or whatever the rugby equivalent of kick-off is at two... And then the men kick off at half four, I think. Uh, that's England against France. But there was no issue getting tickets at all. So I'm assuming maybe that's not as popular. Because I feel like if it was United playing a team, but like the women playing beforehand, the tickets would just sell out to like the season ticket holders, basically. They'd be well, I'm just thinking whether it's possible whether you could, anyone who's season ticket for men's way, you say, or you can, I don't know, come. You know, spend a bit of extra money, you know, to attend the women's game and maybe, you know, people have a, a season ticket for, you know, the women's, maybe they can offer a ticket to them for the men's game later, possibly, in, like, uh, and also in maybe in the same seat as well, because it's how they usually pause in that corner at the old school, well, then the old traffic usually old season tickets, it's kind of like, well, men will be, there'll be people who's, men's season tickets are in that way so I'm not sure whether it's possible if there's a part of the stadium where they can put all the season ticket holders where it doesn't affect you know men's season ticket holders that kind of thing it'll be complex but I'm sure there's a way you can maybe mm. get around it yeah if it could be planned properly I would definitely be interested in them trialing that to see how it works and if it doesn't work at all, if it's a complete disaster, obviously don't do it again. But it would take a lot of planning. But it would be an interesting 
experiment. Well, that, that's why I think for me it'd be better if um, if when you get new owners, maybe build a second stadium for women. Therefore, it's easier where you can go mm. to women's early in the day and then maybe cross to the men's stadium the you know a couple of hours later. Kind yeah, of. John, I'm going to interrupt you there because that yeah. takes me literally to the next thing that I was going to point out, which was this one. Um, Sarah's, but I always think women's teams should always have their own stadium. I don't want to be sharing Old Trafford. So, do you think? Do you think there's an element of that? If the women's game wants to get its own identity, that they should have their own stadium, and we shouldn't be sitting there thinking about trying to get them to fill out a place like Old Trafford. Um, I, I mean, I feel like you know the home of your football club is is that place. You know, that's where you've got an affinity to. But I yeah. don't know. Maybe this might be a, a different way. How would you feel about that? I mean, for me, yeah, I think. That the way City have done it has, you know, been quite impressive, really. Because I, you know, the travel, I drove past both Old Trafford and City's grounds. I think the way City have done it because they built up a partnership. Uh, City, yeah, you know, when we we, we played, uh, you know, the Academy Stadium last year, and uh, you, you see, um, you know, at the Etihad Stadium where it's like, oh, we got a partnership, you know, back in, I think it was 2017 or something where uh, the, the men's, you know, the men's home starts to promote more the women's team and that tied into when they were building the stadium, maybe. So for me, if we are to build a second, uh, you know, stadium old traffic for the women, maybe you could get some kind of partnership to improve you know, the relations with the women's team, you know, because that's the other thing. I know they put coaches on to LSB, but it's almost like I think there's still a bit of a disconnect because LSB is seen as, you know, out of Manchester a little bit, you know, for people who live local to Manchester, obviously people like you, Barry, travel, you know, uh, from far afield and, and same with Sarah and that, but for us who live in Manchester, there's still a bit of a, you know, disconnect. Whereas if you had it, if you had a stadium, because where you mentioned Barry, the actual home is Old Trafford and that, maybe that you can get more of a link and you know, promote better partnerships. And that that's why for me, I think building a second down to Old Trafford and improving the um uh, the positivity around the women's game and that will be the best scenario for me. Interesting. Venus, not seeing our comments before, but nice to see you. Uh, the women who watch men's football should stand up for women to play in men's stadiums, not the men. Women must learn, learn to stand for women and not for the men. All women go watch women play and the men watch. I, I think what you're basically saying, and to be fair, the, the two ladies here are definitely standing up for that. I've got no problem shutting up if you'd like me to, but it will make those a little bit difficult. Uh, there, there, there are, but it's also worth saying that, well, there are a lot of women who have season tickets for the men's you, you don't you don't have an interest in the women's game you know so it, it's not uh, it's when we say oh it's some people aren't interested in the women's game it's not just men you know but, just at that point you know yeah i mean susan's put here and she's quite right she's very near to me uh, if this is the Suze that I'm thinking about, she's quite literally about 10 minutes away from my house. There's definitely a massive logistical issue of getting to LSV. And there is. If you're not in a car, it's not easy to get to. And sometimes, if you are, even if you are in a car, uh, it's quite difficult to get to. So mm. that can be the case. But what I will say about this is, to me, the thing that stands out in here is this idea of it should be the women playing in the men's stadium. And this is where I take issue with it. Because I don't think it is the men's stadium. That's the point I'm trying to make. It's the Manchester United Stadium. And that's it. We're all Manchester United. That's the point I was trying to make. It's, it's our club, um, as in, you know, the men's and the women's. Uh, and so for that reason, it should be our home. And that's what I mean. You go to LSV, for me, it just feels like you're going where the women play. So do we make that the home of Manchester United women in the same way that Chelsea have done with Kings Meadow? But they are going to outgrow that eventually i would think so there we go listen i can't believe it we've done 50 minutes on old trafford which is amazing because i definitely expected that to drop off around about 30 minutes uh, <laughs> and a couple of little things planned for it but here we go and absolutely it is indeed uh Suze, and that's great to hear so lovely to see you on the show thank you for joining us um i'm gonna point out I'm going to jump to a different thing. I was going to talk about the FA Cup, but somebody was just speaking about injuries and then asked the question. There we go. It was Chris Ratcliffe. 
talking of injuries, how is, how are Lisa and Maria? Does anyone know? Well, that was going to be one of the subjects, and we'll talk about that. Nobody knows about Maria as yet. Um, we don't know how long she'll be out for. Uh, we shall have to wait and see. Uh, that was funnier than I think I've got there, but never mind. I shall move on. And Nelson. Now, I said on Monday, we did the show, I very clearly said that if it's a hamstring, it could be six or seven weeks and wouldn't expect to see her back until after April. Um, as it stands, that could well have been a premonition, if nothing else, because it seems to have come out as an eight-week layoff, which is a long one. She's not played much for us, but as I said, it felt weird because it was like a new sign-in for us, wasn't it? Because she's not played yet, even though we've had her now since January. Do we think that makes much of a difference? Is that going to be a problem going into the running? He didn't go straight to Cascarino. He went to Ladd. What do you think, Jess? Is it, are we going to miss Nelson, or is it just a shame we're just going to have to wait until next season to see what we can get out of her? Um, I mean, it's quite difficult to miss someone that hasn't actually kind of played um i think yes i think it's just a shame because it would have been really good to actually see more of her uh and now we are obviously gonna have to wait until next season um and that's just it's really unfortunate you know if it's the same i think it was a hamstring injury that she had previously so if it's the same kind of injury that is definitely concerning um and i'm also if it is the same injury i'd be a little bit concerned about what the kind of physios and stuff are doing, although presumably she was obviously cleared to play. Uh, but I think with hamstring injuries, the chance, the first, when you get kind of cleared, the chances of you doing the same thing again within about two weeks is really, really high. Um, so clearly a lot of work is going to have to be done with her before she is kind of ready to play again. So, yeah, just really gutting for her, to be honest. Really, really gutting. Absolutely heartbreaking to have your season effectively ended on your debut for your new club. Absolutely, that's probably why she was tearful. She knew what to expect, I think. Um, Connor says, such a shame for her, likely out of the World Cup as well. That's possible because she won't have had much of a game time. So it's unfortunate for her she missed the Euros last summer. Absolutely. Ellie, I think I think now might be the time to get her off your shirt. She probably needs to go and do some physio and stuff. So, you know, if you could just let her go. Uh, to go and do what she needs to do, that would be fabulous. Um, and Sporty, senior question. We're not going to talk about that tonight. We don't have the time for that. But don't worry. All for United is here for you. Join us tomorrow on what we would call the men's channel. Go over there, just all for United. That we'll have this conversation tonight. All right? We'll definitely talk a bit about that. So if you're interested, come and see us because it will include all of that. That's good. Um, Sarah, what's your thoughts? I mean, it is a shame. It looked a bit obvious that it was going to be a long one, like I say, looking at her face. Are we going to miss that? I mean, it is. I mean, really, in the brutal sense of the word, we were doing quite well without her. It's just a shame we just don't have that additional option now, isn't it? Yeah, that's exactly it. I mean, especially just coming to the end of the season, you know, it's, I mean, not to be like negative or anything, but we don't know who could get injured and at what time, and it would have been really good to have her as an option so it's it's bad when you lose any player for for that many weeks um and in the limited time she had on the pitch i thought she looked very good you know um i could see the skill that she has and i think it would have been great to possibly have her as a goal scorer as well for the run in so yeah it's it's really it's really bad for her and the idea that she might miss the World Cup as well, because I know that was clearly something she was working towards when she spoke about potentially signing for United and getting game time. So it's really bad situation. And that's the sad bit, isn't it? Because, John, you get to a point where you get a bit selfish when it comes to these sort of things. We've had the Euros have come round, international football. We always know that's that drama between club and country selfishly you'd almost want her to sort of not play the world cup and have the ability to properly rehabilitate herself get a proper pre-season in and then you know hit the ground running but you can't take the emotion out of football players want to play for their club and they want to play for their country they want to be able to go and the world cup is the biggest international tournament there's going to be it's heartbreaking for her that she's going to miss that, isn't it? Because you, you have to take the club out of it at some time and go, for her personally, this is a big loss if she doesn't get to go. 
No, oh, absolutely. And uh, yeah, it's always sad that it's just also, and players are selfish, as you mentioned, and they want to be playing for on that and uh, you know in many ways having a long time and like, she's not really paid much for Russ and uh, she would have wanted points through you know coming to United as well and obviously we know United's a massive team and, uh, and obviously it will be frustrating for her that she can't play at the World Cup after you know missing Euros last year it's the classic double whammy isn't it but um, for me it's um, you got to have the the strong mind and the strong will to be able to come back from you know adversity, and, that, and from the perspective of us as a team, I mean it, it it's getting you know tight the battle for top three. Obviously, we're in the semi finals the FA Cup as well, and uh, you know you want to have as many players available as possible. But that being said, we haven't we're not the only ones. You know, Arsenal missing um, uh, Mead, Amar, and Mead. Well, maybe Billy Bright's out for the season now, possibly. Um, and, you know, so we're not the only ones. So you want to have as many players available as possible. But it's also an opportunity for other people. It's starting to look now like Vilda's starting to come into, you know, a, a bit of home now and could possibly challenge for the first, you know, for a starting position and that. So for me, it's... Um, it's frustrating for her. I hope she comes back from it. We, we did also spend a lot of money, you know, on her as well. I think it was around 180k or is so where she will have a, a point to prove like next season, but she's just got to focus on getting herself back. It's frustrating. I'm sure she's down in the dumps, but so, you know, with a strong mentality, I'm sure she'll come back from it and that'll probably be next season. 100%. And Sporty, it's almost like you read my notes for today. I'm getting a little bit worried that there's been a secret camera installed and you're reading things over my shoulder. Um, but yeah, it's absolutely good to be able to tighten it with the players to get these through this tough period. And the really interesting thing, Rachel Williams has done a, a press conference this morning. It was so good to hear some of the things that have come out of that press conference. But specifically, uh, Nikita Paris has, has called this group of players uh, a sisterhood. And Rachel, uh, this morning, said that it's the most sociable dressing room she's been involved in. Always doing things. She talks about Fridays being like a dress-up Friday. They come up and I don't mm. God knows what they dress as. I haven't got a clue. Um, but whatever it is, they're enjoying themselves. And that's great. Um, but she says that she believes in Mark Skinner and she believes in what it is that he believes that they can do. And they are just a tight-knit bunch of players that are enjoying playing at the club, that enjoy playing with each other. And that's got a massive, massive impact in what we've then gone on to do in the league and in the cup. And that is against what some people were saying. You know, it was only a couple of months ago that I was reading t tweets that, you know, players hate Mark Skinner and all that sort of thing, and he doesn't treat them nicely. This does not sound like this is coming from the players. I haven't made this up. You can go and watch it live coming out of her mouth. She's actually said this. Um, you wouldn't say that if it wasn't true. So would you go along with that? Because they look like a team, don't they? You see it on their TikToks, the things that Millie Turner does, um, Jess. It's unbelievable. They're always having a laugh. And then I'm laughing along watching it. So I don't see how anybody could not be enjoying being in the Man United dressing room right now. Yeah, I mean, I think at the end of the day, like, there'll always be the odd person doesn't get on with the manager because in life you don't get on with everyone. But I think you've got to take what they're saying at face value. They might lie, they might not. But I don't see the point in sitting here and going, looking at a picture or something and going, oh, it looks like, I don't know, it, it looks like Ella Toon's giving someone a side eye here. No, just just go off what they're saying. If they're saying they're having a good time, then believe them, they're having a good time. That's all we can do. Otherwise, you're just guessing and there's no point. We don't know. The only people that know are the players. So I think you've just got to take what they say at face value and believe when they say that it's actually okay there and, you know, it's not like some sort of work camp and they're not being kind of like whipped uh, every day and they are actually, they like each other for the most part and they're having... A relatively good time and and Sarah that seems to be the case when you watch the games as well doesn't it you know you can see they want to play for each other they care about each other you know they're all celebrating together 
there, there does seem to be a really special type of spirit in this squad, doesn't there? Yeah, there does. And like, you know, like we obviously don't know what goes on unless they say it. But like you said, why why would they lie? You know, they wouldn't go to great lengths to say this stuff if it wasn't true. And I mean, if it was true, then they'd probably just say nothing at all. You know, so I don't think you can read too much into that. But um, yeah, I mean, just... The, like we've seen what's happened even with some of the national sides with the issues that they've had with their coaches and how they've reacted to that. I think, you know, if there was a real, if there was a serious problem with the coach and they just did not like their methods, then we would definitely hear about it. Absolutely. I, I tend to agree. I've got to be honest. And John, what was your thoughts? I mean, I, I think I know where you're going to go with this, but I mean, it's, it's just, they're a really good team playing under a really good manager, in my opinion, and they are just nailing it. They're doing everything right. And it shows that camaraderie It's a massive thing. When they're not playing for each other, is it a case that actually sometimes we often say they down tools because they're, a, you know, they're annoyed with the manager, but is it just that they're all divided and separated? So actually they're just not playing together. It's just a bunch of individuals. We don't have that now. We've got an actual team that's gelled together. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> and we've, uh, we've shown that at times this season. Uh, and ultimately, you know, we're two points off top spot, albeit Chelsea have a game in hand. We're in the top good position with top three. We're in the semi finals of the FA Cup. Why wouldn't you be happy? <laughs> you know, like ultimately, if you're the team, you're doing very well uh, this season. And, they, you know, we are improving. I just hope that we don't slip out the top three, I really don't know, because psychologically that might be damaging, but we're looking good at the moment, also we could potentially reach, uh, you know, out of the draws, we could have gone the semi-finals, no disrespect, but Brighton is probably the one we would have most wanted, Old Traffic, it's almost, I wouldn't say the guarantees against the final, but it's as good a draw you're going to get to get a final at this point, so for me, you just got to a uh, be positive and uh, if you get past Brighton you got day at Wembley to look forward to don't you so uh, for me uh, whenever you're on Instagram and you, you, see, you constantly see them dressing up or that you know there's a really feel good team and if everyone in the team's getting along and all that then you know it, it, like you say it's a team environment and there are still some people who still pedal the myth that uh, oh they're not happy with the man oh man, they might be the odd person not happy with you know you know them not getting game time and all that but ultimately everyone knows you gotta fight for your place in the team you can only pick 11 and that so for me you gotta try your best and all that and that uh, every most players have contributed to this season so for me it's uh, it's positive you keep going forward so that's how we have a good end to the season Absolutely. Um, what you just said there, Sarah, is another point that Rachel did make, which is that what they do off the pitch then obviously goes on the pitch. Because when it's people you like, you want to go to war with them. You want to go out there and, and work hard for them. You know, when one of them gets knocked off the ball, we saw that against Arsenal last season. And Jonas is sat there having a go at them from the touchline. Look how far Tooney went to get in there and get in his face. Go, oh, you leave them alone. That's not how it works. And that's what you need. You want players that are going to go out there and, you know, shed blood, sweat and tears for each other. Because that's how you go and win things. If you're divided, it's never going to happen. Never going to happen. And here, uh, Kaz has said, well, at least Mark Skinner has finally noticed that the Toon and Boris are possibility. So you'll not hear a peep out of me. And, you know, I've always said that Boris was a replacement for Toon, that the two of them would interchange that way. But I, I can't argue against Lewis. They were both playing uh, and they both did incredibly well. You know, it was a, a good game. Good to see Boris able to do that. So I'll be more than happy to eat my words if we can get Boris there working with Tooney. Absolutely, 100%. Um, very quickly, FA Cup semi finals coming up. We've got Brighton. Feeling happy about that, Jess? Yeah, I think that was the best draw, definitely. And at home, even better. Off to the finals, do you think? Yeah, I think so. I think so too. Chelsea? No, she's not going to like me now. Charlie? 
fun. <laughs> that's embarrassing. Charlie said that we were going to get Chelsea. Uh, she said, that's what will happen. She said that on Monday. And then she immediately said after, what I'd like to happen would be for Man United to get Brighton at home and then for Kirsty Hansen to absolutely take the mickey out of Chelsea and knock them out of the cup. So part one of her want has come true. Santa has popped around early. So... I can see that. Yeah, I think we can manifest that into existence. Imagine it. We're halfway there. We've just got to do that final little push to get the rest of it over. Do you see that, Sarah? I mean, you pleased about it? And can you see Chelsea getting knocked out with Agent Hansen doing the business? Yeah, I'm definitely pleased about that. And yeah, if we all manifest it, then it's going to happen. I'm Yeah, I can definitely see that happening. I think Villa will definitely be really up for this. You know, they'll want to get to that final. So it's definitely a possibility. Absolutely. <laughs> Goodness, look at that. We've already gotten there. Get the Wembley bus sorted. That's not my job. It's not my job. I don't do buses. Uh, you've got the wrong person there. But yes, absolutely got the Wembley bus. Um, and sporty, just professional to the end. Good draw, still have to do our job. Brighton have done us before, so we can't take it lightly. Fair points. Um, yeah, we do have to play them back to back, don't we? Because it's uh, because it's kind of back to back. We play them April we'll second, break in between. Yeah, break for April the ninth, April sixteenth, cup game. Really annoying, actually, because I think on the Tuesday, if I've got it right. Um, it's just a game against Australia. It's just a friendly. Um, and that's just before the FA Cup semi-final. So I'm a little bit peeved that, that it doesn't mean anything. It's just something they've done just for the sake of having the Lionesses play. So I'm hoping uh, that we'll be seeing a lot of debuts for people. Um, you know, lots of minutes for people like Lauren James. She can play a whole 90 minutes. It'd be great to see her terrorise Australia and, you know, have a little hug with her bestie, Sam Kerr. No problems with that whatsoever. She can play... Stick any Roebuck or Rambo in goal. That'd be nice. No dramas with that. Just basically leave the United players alone. They can all come home early or watch and cheer politely from the sides. Or, or, or do a Rashford. Oh, I got all that's all not. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Great, oh that, that'd be true. Oh, sorry. I've just said, uh, I've got slight tightness in me, calf. Yeah. yeah. Be perfect. Yeah, so there you go. James, I'm not going to put up what you've put there because uh, we try to keep it PG on this show, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll paraphrase for those watching. Uh, you guys are ragging on Chelsea. I don't know why because it's an United fan channel. You know, we're not that friendly with Chelsea. Um, they've just beaten the European champions. Excellent. I'm so incredibly pleased for them. This is my little round of applause for Chelsea. That's as good as it gets. Okay. Um, exactly. Tony, who cares? Not us, wrong channel. You're after Kings Meadow Chronicle or something like that. Um, oh, all right, Connor's getting involved now. Chelsea look a different team with Cuthbert and Ryan in the team, and yes, they do. Um, listen, this is why I didn't want Chelsea. You want well, yeah, Chelsea, you're here now. I, I did, I mentioned you on Monday's show saying that this is what you wanted. Um, you actually wanted Chelsea in the semi finals, John. I'd said that um, on balance, if we were going to play Chelsea, I think we'd have more chance against them if it was at home in the semi finals. I, I did say that, you know. So for me, that's for me. If we, you got them at LSB, I think we might possibly have more chance of beating them that way than maybe in the final. But, you know, it is why, it is, you know, Do I'm you not going to think you've got a right and back that. But- that would have been a trickier proposition than it was a couple of weeks ago. Well, it, it, they are going to be a different team because every team is different when they make changes. Fair point. Can't argue with that. Love that. He did that nice and slow and I couldn't... I have no comeback to that, John Commode. Yes, you're right. They do. Silly <laughs> question. I can't ask good questions all the time. I'm sorry. No, no, but, but for me, it's like I do. I love it. Phil words be Chelsea, but I do think we'll probably get Chelsea in... And I, I'm just, I was just thinking logically, would it be better to get Chelsea in the semi finals LSV or to get them <coughs> for me, possibly LSV? But hopefully, we, if we play them in the final, we beat them. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. Sang asking, do we need another lesson? No, thank you, sir. Uh, you realise we won seven trophies since you didn't last, didn't lose to us. And? 
Sarah Spicer. <laughs> um, Sarah Spicer. I don't know what to say to you, Sang. Uh, Chelsea need knocking off their perch. Absolutely. You guys care because you know they'll beat you in the final. I actually said, I think just making the final having the chance to go to Wembley, Jess, is really what it's all about for us this season. If we win it at Wembley, anything can happen in the final. But yeah, absolutely. I mean, I get, yeah, I get, something new. Yeah, I get that we might have a better chance at home in a semi, but I just want to get to a final, to be honest. Mm. Uh, I think it'll be huge for, for the girls to get to a final at Wembley. And we, we've got to be able to beat them. I'm sorry, but at some point we have got to be able to beat them. As we grow as a team, as we get like older in our kind of existence, we need to be able to beat teams like Chelsea, which means we need to be able to beat them anywhere. You know, we beat Arsenal at the Emirates. Um, if we're going to beat them, it doesn't matter where, we need to just be able to beat them full stop. And, and that's it, basically. Oh, it's only a matter of time, so why can't the time be Wembley? It, 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 it will happen. It will happen point, so why not the FA Cup final? So I've gone against everything I said. That other side, I said we don't lose in big stadiums, do we? There you go. Yeah, I see. <laughs> I think so. The reason in Chelsea in the final. So well, it's exactly what Rianne said. Beat Chelsea for the first time at Wembley and lift a trophy in front. Of nice. Them. Absolute dream, that. Wouldn't it? They did it to us at Kings Meadow. It would be nice. And let's not forget Emma Hayes' own words. Chelsea just used to winning stuff, so therefore they're not going to be as up for it as we are. Um, <laughs> you know, so Barry is correct. Oh, I love it when you say that. So Wembley is a massive event. Uh, <laughs> I, do. I mean, that would spoil what we've just said, but yes, that would be amazing. But there's a part of me that wouldn't want that to happen. And the reason for that is because if we did get to the final at Wembley, Kirsty Hansen wouldn't be able to play for Villa. So she'd get the experience of everything there. But having done all the work that she's done to get to um, the position that she's playing in with Villa, for there to then go, it's one thing to, you know, miss out on playing at LSV or Cup semi-finals or all that sort of thing. When you've done the hard work and had a season as good as Kirsty Hansen has had at Villa, you know, she is still a United player. Uh, and I, I do still really, you know, quite like her. So I'd be gutted, actually, for Kirsty Hansen if that were the case, that Villa did knock out Chelsea um, and then she wasn't able to play. Um, and I don't know. For me, I mean, I don't know what you guys think, but if I was Mark Skinner, I'd actually consider, if it was our choice, actually going, yeah, go on then, it's the final. Because it's every girl's dream, isn't it? Play at Wembley. I mean, yeah. you play, tell me. That's your dream, isn't it? If you were told you can't play because the other team won't let you, that'd be gutting, wouldn't it? Yeah, of course. But unfortunately, um, it's all about winning. You know, it's and you're going to do whatever you can for the advantage. And like you say, she's had a cracking season and she really is smashing it for them. Um, so, yeah, as much as it is absolutely gutting and as much as I love her, United first and foremost, which means... Sorry, Hunt, but yeah. no, you can't play. We, we we didn't write the rules. Exactly. Mm. It's true, we didn't. But I'd still feel bad for her. I really. Uh, well, it, it, you're right. It's absolutely gutting, but unfortunately, it's just one of them. But we've got to get to the final first, anyway, and so mm. of either Chelsea. Or well, ima imagine if it, people say Skinner does have tactics. Imagine if Hansen scored the winner's knockout Chelsea. And Imagine if we were called Hanson. <laughs> Imagine if we were called, oh, she couldn't know because she played in other games. Ignore that. She's going to have to stay there. Uh, anyway, <laughs> Sang, what's all this? The ebb and flow, the Atlantic tides, the drift of the continents, the very position of the sun along its ecliptic. These are just a few of the things we control of this rival, which is interesting because none of them have got anything to do with football uh, nor matter in that respect. So it's great that you've got this control of the universe, but actually... You know, there's a bit on the pitch that matters, isn't there? Um, just so just really because good. they've beaten Leon doesn't mean say they've won the European Cup just yet, Sang. So let's ah. just not get carried away. You know, there's there a step further, John. Look at this. Yeah. Stanley scores an own goal after Hansen's put Chelsea out. I mean, that's a bit harsh. Bit harsh. Poor Stanley. Um, so there we go. Uh, James, I've eleven players capable of results. Don't forget the game is judged by the last whistle. Very true. All joking aside, uh, Sang's agreeing with you there, Jess. Uh, reminds you of Chelsea men. Wouldn't let Conor Gallagher play against them with Palace. Yeah, very sad. 
Uh, it should be a novelist. And one game at a time. Let's beat West Ham this weekend. Absolutely. And with that in mind, um, let's have a very quick prediction. What do you think the score is going to be at Old Trafford, Jess? Bearing in mind the aggregate score so far is 10-1 in <laughs> games there. What do you think the, the score might be? I'm going to say 3-0 to United. Sarah? Yeah, I'm going to say the same. I mean, it's got to be better than my last game, which was nil-nil, so I hope I don't curse it this time. So <laughs> one nil. I'm going to go 3-1. Three, 3-1, one. Three, one. fair enough. Fun fact, one of the prediction leagues I run, not the one that's the Orphe United one, uh, one of my mates, who is the guy who's second at the moment for the Orphe United one, sent in... Um, <laughs> sent in a, a prediction that was one to the home team and then instead of writing a number he wrote year and i like is the year 2023 that's that's going to be a lot of goals we worked it out that's one every four seconds uh and could you just imagine what match of the day would be like on that one we've got 2024 goals to show you uh, that would have been <laughs> just imagine that uh, that would have been something uh, they definitely wouldn't need a gary and that night that's for sure uh, no time for his chatter. Uh, three one says Sang. High lane production three nil. Chris Ratcliffe going a step further. He sent us the scorers. It can be Russo in two, and hopefully Goldson. She should be back. That would be nice. Um, all good, and we will dominate. But they will score a poxy goal, and it will be all thanks to the changings of the seasons and the tides that we control. <laughs> so thank you for that. Uh, three nil there, goal to the Russo, but Vilda to get on the score sheet as well. So there you go. Listen, we've done a cracking job. We've spoken many times about the football. It's time to let people go home and do what they are home, go to bed, do what they want to do. It's their evening. You know what I mean? We sort it all out. Um, but, go on, Donald, I'll let you have the last word. We're scoring the first 20 minutes. Mark my duck words. I, you could be quackers, but we'll see. Um, <laughs> it's been a brilliant day. Thank you. Sadly, always, always, always score in the first 20 minutes. <laughs> 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 um, we've done a massive chat about Old Trafford thank you so much everybody who got involved that was quite special actually that we managed to get so much out of something with so little hype uh, so that was good we discussed Lisa Nelson we've spoken about the FA Cup we've done all those sorts of things it's been brilliant thank you Jess lovely to have you on as always Sarah safe trip over for the weekend I hope you yep. enjoy your time at Old Trafford um, is it your first time in Old Trafford or have you been in there before? No, no, I've been there plenty of times. Never for a women's game, game though. <clears throat> Brilliant. Well, I hope it is uh, a rather cracking baptism there for you on that one, uh, like we say. And John, thank you for jumping on last minute and helping us out. This is a lovely thing to say, so we'll pop this up. I've been enjoying watching this channel since I found it. Looking forward to next time. And when is the next time? Hold on a second whilst I just think about it. It should be tomorrow because there's meant to be a preview. So that's what I'm thinking it's going to be. So tomorrow should be the, the brighter of the West Ham preview. So hopefully we will be on for that. Uh, Connor will confirm in the comments uh, that I've got that right. I'm sure I have. I think I have. Uh, the men's channel also will be on tomorrow, as we mentioned, as we start talking about this little takeover thing that might or might not be happening. The last thing I've got to say is that tomorrow is a big day. I don't know if you knew this. It's come out on Twitter. But tomorrow is the 40th birthday uh, of the man that we call Mark Skinner. So it's never been done on this channel before, but I've cut a little happy birthday song for, for Mark Skinner just to finish him off. I know how much everyone enjoyed my singing on Monday, so don't, don't take yourself off. <clears throat> Here we go. Happy birthday to you from all at AFU. Happy birthday, Mark Skinner. Now let's win a cup or two. That was fantastic. Ten out of ten. <laughs> yes. There we go. Yes. Yes, happy birthday, Mark. Tomorrow. So happy birthday, yes, absolutely. Um, listen, I just hope he carries on doing what I think has been quite a good job. And I can say, let's hope we go on to win a trophy or two, especially that one at Wembley, because that would be pretty something, wouldn't it? Excellent. Take care, everybody, and we'll see you all tomorrow.